Um, for tonight, we're going to be continuing uh, the sum and angle formulas. And they're going to give you different information to work with. So they're going to give you something that looks like this. They're going to give you, say, um, the sine of alpha is equal to 4 fifths. And pi over 2 is less than alpha, which is less than pi. Okay, so this is one angle, and we're going to call it alpha. So where is alpha located? What quadrant is it in if it's between pi over 2 and pi? Not everybody at once. It's a cricket. Yeah, thank you. That's quadrant 2. Yes, very good. So they're going to give you that, and then they're going to tell you sine of beta is like negative, excuse me, negative 2 root 5 over 5. And they're going to tell you that pi is less than beta, which is less than 3 pi over 2. That's a 3. Beta, yeah, beta. Beta looks like this. It's a funny looking beta. Four, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the actual sign for alpha, and this is the sign for beta. Uh, okay. All right, so. Where is um, angle beta located? What quadrant is it in? Quadrant three, yes, very good, okay. So this is the information that they're gonna be given to you. They're not gonna tell you what quadrant it is. You have to figure that part out, all right? And then they're gonna ask you a lot of questions, okay? And there's like an A part, a B part, a C part, and they're giving you all the setup, okay? This is all the setup. So they're gonna ask you, what is the cosine of alpha, all right? So since we're dealing with the alpha function, or the alpha angle, excuse me, we're going to draw a quadrant in quadrant two, and we're going to figure out where our alpha has to be, which is our reference angle, of course, right there. And what information can we put onto my trig function um, angle, knowing that this is pi over two, this is pi. What do I know about alpha? I know something. What is it that I know? I know it's in quadrant two, but I also know something else about this triangle that I've just drawn. The sign is four fifths. Very good. So where does the four have to go? On the opposite side of that. Yeah, this is the four, right? Okay, where does the five have to go? The hypotenuse. Good. So the question remains then, what is the leftover side? Three. Of course it's three because we use the Pythagorean theorem. So, but since I'm in quadrant two, if I was considering this point over here, the point would be negative three comma four. So you might want to consider making that a negative three. So now I know that the cosine of alpha is equal to what? Negative three fifths, okay? Negative three fifths. So that would be part A. What do you guys think so far? Not too bad, right? Okay, let's do B. Let's find uh, the cosine of beta then, okay? I'm using beta. I'm in quadrant three that you guys all told me from before, so I'm gonna draw a picture that represents quadrant three. Here's pi, here is three pi over two. I'm gonna draw my angle in quadrant three, call it beta, here's my right angle. That's my reference angle that I've been given. And what information can I put onto the graph about my angle beta? The sine, and where does the negative 2 rad 5 have to go? The opposite side. So this has to be negative 2 rad 5. Where does the 5 have to go? The hypotenuse, 5. So the question remains then, what is, what is this stuff, right? And of course, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to get it. So use Pythagorean theorem when you get to this part right here. So I'll say x squared plus negative 2 rad 5 squared equals 5 squared. So therefore, x squared has to be 25 minus negative 2 rad 5 squared. So x squared has to be 25 minus, okay, what's negative 2 rad 5 all squared? 20, yes, very good, because negative 2 squared is 4, rad 5 squared is 5, and 4 times the 5 gives you the 20. Good. So x squared must be 5, x must be the square root of 5 plus or minus. Now in this case, it's going to be minus because I'm over there in quadrant 3 and x's are always positive. So this is negative. Is this case so far? Okay, good. 
So now I have enough information, I can actually answer the question, what is the cosine of beta? Well, the cosine of beta, according to my graph, would have to be the adjacent, which is negative rad 5, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5. Okay? So that's the setup, right? I now know the sine of alpha. It was given to me. I know the cosine of alpha. It's negative 3 fifths. I know the sine of beta. It was given to me. And I know the cosine of beta. It's negative root 5 over 5 because I found it. So then I'm all set up to answer this question right here. What's the cosine of alpha plus beta? Oh, you see where we're going with this? It's, yeah, it's, it's back to using the toolkit, right? So when you get to this point, look on your toolkit, right? And it will give you the formula that you need. Do we have it memorized? Let's see here. It's going to be cosine alpha times cosine beta, plus or minus, everybody? Minus. minus, very good. Sine alpha times sine beta. Okay, what's the cosine of alpha? We found it out. What was it? Well, if I look back here, the cosine of alpha in, in part A is negative 3 fifths. So that's negative 3 fifths. Cosine of beta is right up there. That's negative root 5 over 5. Minus. Sine of alpha was given to me. If I look back up in my box... That's four-fifths. Thank you, Adrian. And then how about the sine of beta? Negative two red five over, over five. Good. Now all what's left to do is clean this stuff up. So negative three times negative red five is a positive three red five. Um, let's see here. Over 25. Negative times a negative is going to be a positive. Uh, four times two is eight rad 5 all over 25. So everybody, 3 rad 5s plus 8 rad 5s is a grand total of 11 rad 5s. There you go. All over 25. And we have found the exact answer to the cosine of alpha plus beta, even though we didn't. it wasn't a nice, easy, normal trig function like 30 or 45 degrees. Sine <laughs> of alpha plus beta. All right, find yourself a partner. I want you to see if you can come up with the sine of alpha plus beta. We'll have somebody present the solution, okay? So we'll give you three minutes. Uh, this is your turn. Okay. Okay, so what I did is, so since the sine, <laughs> a sine um, problem, it would be sine, sine of... What is that called? <laughs> alpha, alpha, alpha cosine of beta. And since it's a plus, they're the same since it's a sine function. And then sine of beta co cosine of alpha. So then, if you look back at what those equal, it is um, 4 over 5 negative rad 5 over 5 plus negative 2 rad 5 over 5 uh, times negative 3 over 5. So then you can combine those to a negative 4 rad 5 over 25 plus um, um, a positive 6 red 5 over 25 and you can combine that to a 2 red 5 over 25 because subtraction and that is your answer. Woo! All right. All right.